But first, I should say how pleased I am to be back on deck, just as Peter Dutton has created the real political contest that's been all too rare in recent times. The opposition leader's commitment to emissions-free nuclear power as the only way to get to net zero and keep the lights on means that there's now a clear difference between the two major parties on an issue that really matters. As is clear from today's headlines, when it comes to energy, it can't be business as usual. Without change, there will be blackouts or all our heavy industry will head offshore and take jobs with them because you can't run an industrial economy on intermittent power plus a couple of hours of battery life. Now, the hysteria of the government's attack on Dutton is revealing. I mean, how can nuclear power be as dumb as Labor says if it's exactly what Labor wants to use to power our next generation of submarines? How can nuclear be totally uneconomic when just about every other G20 major economy is using nuclear? How can it be unsafe when there's been a nuclear reactor at Lucas Heights in suburban Sydney for more than 60 years? And how can nuclear take too long when something like Malcolm Turnbull's Snowy 2.0, well, it was supposed to take five years to build and cost us $2 billion, it's now taking more than 10 years to get going and will cost more than $12 billion. Today, the Prime Minister thought he'd scored a coup with the announcement that former New South Wales Liberal Energy Minister Matt Keane would be the next head of the Climate Change Authority. Today, Keane said that nuclear was uneconomic, no doubt trying to impress his new political masters. In order to bring nuclear into the system, it would take far too long and would be far too expensive. I know this wasn't his view back in 2021 when he said that nuclear power had a role to play. Into the future, will nuclear have a, have a role to play? I, I, I think so and I hope so. Uh, but right now, I can't bet on technology that isn't av readily available. Now, Labor will think this appointment of Keane was some sort of political masterstroke, but all it's done is vindicate people like me who've always said Keane is no Liberal. In fact, Albanese has just given me a win. I've always said Keane was a turncoat, and he is the proof for the Liberal base. It will also continue to highlight the weakness, the turpitude of moderate Liberals, linos like Keane, Liberals in name only, to Peter Dutton's long-term benefit. And it's likely to persuade large numbers of voters that this whole renewable push has been a stitch-up by the political class and woke big business to rip them off. It was Keane, after all, who rejected the plan to keep the giant Irari coal-fired power station open to keep the lights on in Sydney. Instead, Keane said a two-hour battery would do the job. Well, thank God Chris Minns has overturned that dumb decision and New South Wales at least has a secure power supply for now. Today, at the start of a sitting fortnight, the government demanded that the opposition provide costings for its nuclear policy. But... but the government won't cost its own energy policy. We know that the cheapest form of new energy is renewables. Is renewables. The government wants costings from Dutton, but refuse to do their own. Indeed, this government has embarked on what it admits is the biggest economic transformation since the Industrial Revolution, converting from fossil fuels to renewable energy in just eight years without a costing at all. It promised to cut your power bill by $275 per year on the basis of Reputex modelling. That was before the last election. Well, that's been completely discredited by subsequent massive power price rises, in some cases up to $1,000 per household. In fact, the government's policies have been costed by the Tri University Study Net Zero Australia at up to $1.5 trillion by 2030. Then there's the environmental issues associated with placing vast numbers of wind turbines in pristine areas or coastal waters and the associated impact on birds and marine life. Let's never forget that the start of the Albanese government's life, Energy Minister Chris Bowen said that getting to 82% renewables would require the installation of 22,000 new solar panels every single day. 
plus the construction of 40 large wind turbines every single month for eight years, all of which will have to be paid for, plus 28,000 kilometres plus of new transmission lines at pre-election, they said would cost us $80 billion. So while the costings that Dutton has promised pre-election will undoubtedly be high, compared with the never-disclosed costs of the government's own policies, they'll be both reasonable and feasible. For instance, the new nuclear reactor that the Emiratis have just installed to supply a quarter of their electricity, well, it took 15 years from initial decision to full operation and cost about $30 billion. Now, there's no doubt that Peter Dutton's taken a big risk by backing nuclear power. But he also took a big risk opposing the voice. That's leadership. And frankly, we need more leadership and less me tooism in politics right now. I reckon it's now game on for the next election. And then Dutton has given himself every chance to win. I mean, just look at the government's double standards. Demanding that the coalition cost its policies but refusing to cost its own. We're going to move to nuclear instead, and they've done it without a costing. I mean, seriously. He can't provide key details. They think they know better than the CSIRO, but they won't release their costs. Or... This is economically insane what they are seeking to do. This government's writing for fall. Hypocrisy, thy name is Labor.